Father, we come tonight in the strong name of your Son. We come in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray for the President, the Vice President. We pray for all those in Washington of each party. And Father, we pray for the judges of this land. We pray for the governor of this state, Kate Brown. Father, it's my prayer that she would come to know your son. That you would take her heart. That you would use her in a mighty way for thy yes, glory. Father. Yes, Father. Father, we know that nothing's impossible. Absolutely. And Father, we pray for all the political leadership. Regardless of the politics, Lord, you know each and every heart. So Father, we just commit this to you. And we thank you and we praise you and we give you the glory. When we come tonight in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. It's his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a seat. And a special prayer for all those firefighters. Amen. I tell you, those are some brave men and women. And some of them have been lost. And so, I'll just, Father, I pray for the firefighters and their families. Amen. And Father, we just pray that you'd watch over and protect them. Father, we thank you that they protect our communities. And Father, we just pray that you'll protect them. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we get started, I just want to uh, say a few things. Um, our country, as I mentioned, is in trouble. I believe only God can make a, make the difference in this nation. Uh, I don't have any faith in any of the politicians. And I believe that the church should be involved, okay? Uh, and when I say by vote, I want the church to vote. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. You pray and you ask God to do that. But we need to vote. We, we live in a country where we have a great freedom. And we have a freedom to vote. I work in a lot of countries around the world where they don't have those freedoms. They can't vote. We can vote. And uh, many, many times Christians think, well, my vote doesn't count. Oh, yes, it does count. Uh, a lot of elections are, are won or lost with just a handful of votes. And so if the church would vote, this is the midterms coming up, vote. And it's just, you say, well, I'm not sure who I, just ask God, pray about it. Talk to some Christian friends, pray. And then I'd like to encourage Christians to get involved in politics. Yeah, we need Christian mayors. We need Christians on the city council. We need Christians to say we need Christians in Washington. We need Christians on the school boards. Now let's just talk about school boards for a second. Every, almost every family here might have somebody that could run and win. You say, well, frankly, we don't have time. We're busy. We're, we're working families. Do you think these school boards meet every day? No. They may meet once a month for a few hours on a Thursday evening or something. But look at what's happening to our schools. We have lost the education in our country. We're losing it. But if Christians would get on the school boards, and let me tell you something, pastors, if, if, the, if, the, if the evangelical churches just got together, the pastors had a little powwow and said, all right, who do you got in your church that would make a good mayor? Who do you got... Well, we've got this person, that person. Okay, good. We'll get behind them. You got anybody that might be good for school board? Maybe another church guy would raise his hand. Yeah, I've got a couple of people who'd love to be on the school board. You could work together. You could put some candidates out there and then raise money. Get behind them. And watch what God can do. Okay? The church. We need Christian Political activist, okay? That's all. Christians doing it for the glory of Almighty God, for His Son Jesus Christ. So I would encourage you. 
uh, to pray about that. But you got the midterms coming up, vote. Get your family out there to vote. Now don't go back and pull up your aunt and uncle that have been dead 20 years, don't do that. <laughs> but you get, get your family out there to vote and uh, let's watch what God can do. I just want to say a, a couple of words uh, tonight from God's Word. Have you ever thought that maybe time is running out? Have you ever thought that maybe there isn't any hope? I want to look at a man in the Bible. A man whose time was running out and had no hope. And I want to look at a passage of Scripture, and it's in Mark, the Gospel of Mark, and it's in chapter 10. And I'm reading in verses, uh, starting in verse 46. Now they came to Jericho. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, to shut up. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Rise, he's calling you. Throwing aside his garment, he rose and he came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabbi, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus on the road. Now, Jesus was coming through Jericho and he was on his way out when this encounter took place. Uh, Bartimaeus, he was blind. And maybe you're here tonight and you feel that your time is running out and that maybe you're here tonight and you feel like you have absolutely no hope. Well, I'm gonna give you an invitation tonight. If you're here tonight, you can have a new life you can, you can have your past erased. You can be forgiven of your sins. You can have a new life and a new beginning starting tonight. And that's through faith in God's Son, Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible says all of us have sinned. We've all come short of God's glory. The Bible tells us that the, the penalty of sin is death. The entire human race is under a death sentence from God. We're all guilty. Franklin Graham stands before you guilty. I'm a sinner. But I was 22 years old and one night I got on my knees and I said, God, I have sinned. Forgive me. I want to turn from those sins. And I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins. And I believe that you raised him to life. And that night I gave my life to Christ. God forgave my sins. He healed my heart, my life. And that night, I became a child of the living God. Tonight, you can have your sins forgiven. You can become a child of the living God and you can have that hope of eternal life. God's got a plan and God's got a purpose. And you think, well, time's running out. Let me tell you something. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, time doesn't run out. You see, time goes for eternity in the presence of Almighty God. And maybe you're here and you think there's no hope. God won't forgive me. Oh, yes, he will forgive you. If you're willing to come to him through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, 
the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There's not many ways to God. There's not many roads to God. There's only one road, and it goes through the cross. Because Jesus Christ came from heaven, and he came and he took our sins. And he went to that cross. He was nailed on a cross for our sins. He, was, he died on the cross. He was buried for our sins. But on the third day, God raised his son to life. Jesus isn't dead. He's alive. He's here tonight in Metro, right now. He's here. So you prepare to come. I'm going to call you in just a few moments to get up. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you're not sure that your sins are forgiven, you make sure tonight. Do it. And I'm going to invite you to get up out of your seat and make your way to an aisle and come stand right here in the front. When we've all come, I'll have a word of prayer with you. And then you can go back to be with your friends. They're not going to leave you. You come tonight. Bartimaeus, let's talk about him for a minute. He's a blind guy. The only job he could find was begging. They didn't have schools for the handicapped. They didn't have any clinics that he could go to. There was no education he could get. He was blind. In his blindness, he couldn't see his filth. He couldn't see his rags, nor could he see beauty. But you see, outside of Jesus Christ, we are spiritually blind. The Bible says, you say, I'm rich. I've acquired wealth, and I don't need a thing. But the Bible says, you don't realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. The Bible says, the God of this age... The devil has blinded the minds of those that don't believe. Now Bartimaeus was poor, regardless of your earthly possessions. We're all poor without God. Doesn't matter what you have or who you are. You're spiritually poor outside of Jesus Christ. What makes us poor? What makes us poor to God? Sin. Sin is a robber. It, ro it robs your life. It robs your relationship with God. It separates you from God. All of us are guilty. And we're blinded by the God of this age, the devil who deceives us and lures us into sin. Oh, he promises you fun. Oh, he says it's excitement. Going out and sinning is great. Oh, you can have fun for a while. You can go to parties and you can have men and women and whatever and drink and drugs and but there's this emptiness this hollowness in your life and the drugs and the money and the sex just doesn't fill that vacuum that void in your life you say but Michael, what do you mean by sin we live um, in the new millennium uh, we're a more progressive culture today than we were years ago uh, we can do things that we couldn't have done maybe in 30, 40, 50 years ago. So what do you mean by sin? Well, first of all, God's standards don't change. They don't change yesterday. They're not going to change today. They're not going to change tomorrow. And they're not going to change a million years from now. His laws are the same. Today, yesterday, and forever. You say, okay. You say, we're guilty. What are they? Stealing. Have you ever stolen anything? Well, when I was little, I took a couple of quarters out of my mother's purse. Does that count? Yeah, that counts. Put the quarters back and tell her you're sorry. Give her interest. <laughs> Taking God's name in vain. Yeah. Using the Lord's name in vain is a sin against Him. Worshiping idols. Oh, you say, but well, Frank, we don't really get into that around here. Oh, really? Well, let me tell you, the, the music industry has many idols that young people worship and adore. Sports. Yeah, that's right. You say, but Frank, was anything wrong with it? No, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just how we allow that to be placed in our life. When it becomes the most important thing in your life, then that's a problem. It's an idol. Lying is a sin. Have you ever told a lie? You say, well, no, I haven't done that. Now you're lying right now. <laughs> we laugh because we, we know we're guilty, right? All of us. 
adultery, any type of sexual relationship outside of a marriage relationship is a sin. Now let me say about marriage relationship. A marriage relationship is defined by God. Okay, I don't define it. Uh, your state government doesn't define it. Washington doesn't define it. A marriage relationship is a man and a woman, okay? That's how God defines it. God made us male and he made us female. He didn't make us anything in between. We're male and female. That's the way God made us. But any type of sexual relationship outside of a marriage relationship is a sin. Now, there are many of you are guilty of sexual relationships, sexual sins. And you've been wondering, will God cleanse me and forgive me? I carry a lot of guilt with that. Of course he will. That's why he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross, was for our sins. He took our sins when he went to the cross. And if we're willing to repent, turn, leave it, what happens is a lot of people say, okay, I'll be glad to come to Jesus, but I want Jesus, I want to continue to live in sin. No. You come to Christ, you've got to be willing to turn your back. He requires repentance. And you've got to be sorry for your sins and willing to leave and turn from those sins and to trust Jesus Christ by faith. Murder. Have you ever, you say murder. Well, you know, even Oreo will put you in jail for that. <laughs> Really? How about abortion? Hmm. Now that, uh, you say, well, Franklin, you're stepping on some people's toes here. Well, okay, listen to me. I was invited a few years ago, um, I was being interviewed by a magazine from New York, and this lady was interviewing me, and I thought it would be about a 30-minute interview, like two hours later, she's still asking me questions. So I said, and we were in San Antonio, Texas, uh, down next to the river at a Mexican restaurant. And there was a long table. There was a bunch of us there. So I, I thought just to kind of break things up a little bit, I said, can I ask you a question? And she said, of course. And so she had her glasses on. She took them off and she listened very politely. And I asked her, I said, are your sins forgiven? And then all of a sudden a tear began to come into her eyes. And she said, I, I, I'm not sure. I said, did you know that God loves you and that he sent his son from heaven to this earth to die for your sins? And have you ever invited Christ to come into your heart, to change your heart, to forgive you, to cleanse you? She said, no, I haven't. I said, would you like to do that? Now the tears are coming down her cheeks. She said, yes, I would. Great. Would you like to do it right now? I'll lead you in a prayer. Same prayer I'm going to pray with you tonight. So she bowed her head. I said, just repeat this after me. So I said, dear God. She said, dear God. She said, I said, I'm a sinner. She repeated that. I'm sorry for my sins. She repeated that. I want to turn from my sins. She repeated that. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. She repeated that. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. She repeated that. And tonight I want to invite him to come into my heart. She repeated that. We pray this prayer together. And after we prayed this prayer, tears are just streaming down her cheeks. She said, uh, I have to confess something to you. I said, you don't have to confess anything to me. You just confessed your sins to God and He's forgiven you. She said, no, I have to say this. She said, 20 years ago, I had an abortion. Will God forgive me for what I did? I said, He just did. She said, it's haunted me all of my life. Every birthday, every anniversary, I think about what that child would have been. Five, six years of age, getting ready to go to school. What their first day of school would have been like. Thirteen, being a teenager. Eighteen, when they would have had their first date. It's haunted me. Will God forgive me? And I just looked at her, took her hands, I said, He's forgiven you. Not only has He forgiven you, but He's erased it. It's no record of it. You're forgiven. He's cleansed you. And she, she began to sob. Now these were not tears now of bitterness or of a bitter heart. This was now tears of relief. And she just buried her face into her hands and she just sobbed thanking God for forgiving her sins and changing her life.
right there in an instant. And He'll do that for you tonight. He'll forgive you and cleanse you. All of us have sinned, the Bible says. All of us are guilty. Every one of us. And we've come short, the Bible says, of God's glory. And that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Jesus came to save sinners. He took our sins to the cross. He died for our sins. He was buried for our sins. And on the third day, God raised Him to life. Now Bartimaeus was hopeless. No one can help him. And maybe that's how you feel tonight, that there's no hope. Why do people commit suicide? Because of hopelessness. Or use drugs and alcohol because of hopelessness. There's evidence of hopelessness wherever we turn. Bartimaeus was hopeless. No one could cure his blindness. He expected to die in his blindness. There was no doctors, there was no clinics, there was no medicine, there was nothing. And there's nothing you can do to rid yourself of sin. You can't buy your way to God. Good works won't do it. The Bible says, by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. There is no one righteous, the Bible says. No, not one. And we're dead in our trespasses and sins. All of us are guilty. There is no hope for you tonight outside of Jesus Christ. And you see, Bartimaeus had absolutely no hope until until this commotion. And he's a beggar. And just think of, just get this picture in your mind. He's sitting on the side of the road. And here comes this large crowd. And people are talking. And people are getting up and running. And Bartimaeus is, what's going on? What's happening? Jesus of Nazareth. He's coming by. Now Bartimaeus had heard about Jesus. He had heard about this strange man from Galilee that could raise the dead, the lame could walk, the deaf could hear. Bartimaeus realized that he had this one chance. Now, what would happen if Bartimaeus had said, you know, I think I'm going to listen to CNN tonight and see what they have to say. Or I'm going to get a friend of mine to maybe Google Jesus and see what Google has to say. Or maybe I'll, you know, I'll just wait till he comes back maybe next time and I'll maybe I can meet him then. No. Bartimaeus yelled at the top of his lungs, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. People said, Bartimaeus, shut up. Nobody wants to hear from a blind beggar like you. Just keep on begging. Just don't make a don't make a scene and embarrass all of us, Bartimaeus. You're going to make a fool of yourself, Bartimaeus. The more they rebuked him, the louder he shouted, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still. Now there are a lot of people probably say, hey Jesus over here. Jesus, uh, let's, let's have a selfie, Jesus. You know, it was probably, I mean, remember, there's a large crowd of people. You think Bartimaeus is the only paid person yelling Jesus? A lot of people were yelling Jesus. Jesus this, Jesus that. But they weren't calling in faith. See, Bartimaeus believed in his heart that Jesus could heal him. But the question was, would he? And so he yells, Jesus, thou son of David. He's acknowledging that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stops. Why? Because he called his name in faith. And he'll stop for you tonight if you call his name in faith. If you say, Jesus, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. He will stop for you tonight. 
That same Jesus of Galilee 2,000 years ago is here right now. Amen. And Jesus said, calling. Remember, <coughs> Jesus was coming through Jericho, leaving Jericho, going out of town. On His way to Jerusalem. He was going to go to the cross where He would shed His blood on the cross for your sins. They would nail Him to that cross. And when He was nailed to that cross, it wasn't the Jews or the Romans that nailed Him there. It was your sins that took Him to the cross. That's right, your sins. He died for you. For me. He's nailed to that cross. So Jesus is on His way to the cross. He's not coming back to Jericho. Bartimaeus wouldn't have had another chance. Time was running out. And Bartimaeus knew it. Do you realize your time is running out? He calls at the top of his lungs. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stops calling. Is he calling you tonight? As I've been speaking, there's been a little voice inside of you saying, you need to do this tonight. Because time is running out. Bartimaeus came to Jesus, ran to Him. I bet you Jesus had a big smile because Jesus, Jesus was loving this. Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? <laughs> Jesus knows that you need to be forgiven. He knows all about your sins. He knew Bartimaeus was blind. But he wanted to hear it from Bartimaeus' lips. And if you're willing tonight to call on the name of Jesus and say, I'm a sinner and I'm sorry, forgive me. And I believe that you took my sins to the cross. And I believe that you are buried for my sins, that God raised you to life. And I want to invite you to come into my heart tonight. I want to surrender the control of my life to you. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to be my master. I want you to be my savior. So Bartimaeus, standing there before Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? Lord, that I may receive my sight. Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has made you well. You see, he believed that Jesus could heal him. He believed that Jesus had the power as the Son of God to change his life. And if you're willing to believe your faith tonight in the Lord Jesus Christ will set you free. Amen. You can be forgiven tonight. Mm -hmm. that, that past, it doesn't matter what it is, He'll erase it. That's right, He'll forgive you. And when God forgives you, He erases, He erases your past. And tonight, starting tonight, right now, you're going to have a new beginning. That's right, a new beginning. But you have to make a decision. See, Bartimaeus had to make a decision. Jesus said, call him. What if he just said, uh, nah, I think I'll just sit here for a while. Jesus would have walked right on. You see, he's, doesn't, he's not going to force you to put your faith in. He's not going to force you to get out of your seat tonight. He's calling you. And if you're willing to come to him in faith, to trust him, he'll forgive you tonight. But you've got to be willing to repent, to turn from your sins, and by faith to believe on the name of Jesus Christ tonight. Bartimaeus believed and he was healed. And the Bible says he followed him. And tonight, are you willing to follow the Lord Jesus Christ? God loves you. He made you. He created you. But we've been separated by sin. And so tonight, if you would like to put your faith and trust in Christ, I want you to do something right now. If you've never done this before, just get up out of your seat. Make your way to an aisle. And what I'd like us to do, all of us to stand right now. Make it easier for people to come out. But if you're here tonight and you want to be set free from sin, if you want a new life and a new beginning, just get up and come right now. You're not coming to Franklin Graham. I can't save you. You're coming tonight to God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Just get up and come wherever you are. Just come on. You may be young, you may be old, it doesn't matter. But you're not coming to me. You're coming to God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. 
God loves you and he'll forgive you. But wherever you are right now, just get up and come. I want you to come and we'll have a word of prayer. Then you can go back to be with your friends. They're not going to leave you. They'll stay. But just get up and come right now. I want to ask everyone that's coming to just take a couple steps forward and make room for people that are still coming. You say, Franklin, why do I have to come forward? Can I receive Jesus at my seat? Yeah, you can do that. But remember, Jesus Christ came publicly. And He died on a cross publicly. They stripped Him, they beat Him, they cursed Him, they mocked Him. And He did that publicly for your sins. So that's why I ask you to come and take a stand publicly for Him. Are you sure your sins are forgiven? You say, well, frankly, I'm, I think so. No, I'm not talking about thinking nothing. Are you sure? You see, time's running out. You may never have another opportunity like this. This is between you and God. It's not between you and me. This is between you and God. But Jesus said, I'm the way. He said, I'm the truth and I'm, I'm the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There's only one way to God. And that goes to the cross through Jesus Christ because He's the only one in history to take your sins. Muhammad didn't do this. Buddha didn't do this. They, never, they don't make that claim. Only one, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Will you come to Jesus tonight? I'm just going to wait another moment quietly. And some are still coming. I'm going to wait on you. Do this now. Just do it. Amen. I'd like to say a word to excuse me, those of you that have come. I swallowed a little bit of ash. <laughs> Don't take a swallow of water, sir. <clears throat> Maybe that's better. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it, is it? <laughs> but by <coughs> excuse me, but by coming tonight, you're saying to God, I'm a sinner. By coming tonight, you're saying to God, I believe Jesus Christ is your son. By coming tonight, you're saying to God, I want to turn from my sins. By coming tonight, you're asking Jesus to come into your heart and to your life to take control of your life tonight. And I'd like to lead you in a prayer. And a prayer is just simply talking to God like I'm talking to you. <clears throat> and uh, even if you've got a little ash in your throat, He'll hear you. <laughs> Now let's pray. You just pray this out loud after me, okay? Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sins. That you raised him to life. I invite Jesus to come into my heart to take control of my life from this day forward forever I want to follow Jesus as my Lord and I pray this in Jesus name Amen First of all, let me just say this. It's right now about 9.46 or so, 47. God just heard your prayer, and guess what? He's forgiven you. That's right, you're forgiven. You're forgiven. So when you prayed this prayer, He's hit the delete button. He's erased your sins. He's taken your name. 
and he's now put your name in a book called the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. It's a book in heaven that records every child of his and is written in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is nothing that can erase your name out of that book. Amen. Nothing. Your name is there for eternity. If you are at your seat and you feel that you should have come, okay, just pray that prayer at your seat and text the word decision, 24777. And uh, God bless each and every one of you. Remember your sins, they're forgiven.